How's it going guys? Andy here and welcome back to another video. And today, as you can probably guess, I want to talk to you about the amazing maidenhair fern. Now, this is a very popular house plant, but one that does get a bit of a reputation for being quite tricky or quite difficult to keep alive. A lot of people uh, are saying that they struggle to keep it looking in good health like this one. Now, I would disagree a little bit about that. I don't think these are particularly tricky house plants, but they do have very specific requirements and you have to get a couple of things spot on in order to keep it looking good all the time. So if you have a maidenhair fern and you're looking for a care guide or you're struggling with your one and it's dropping fronds or looking yellow or the leaves are going brown, then stick around because I'm going to explain all about these issues and how to best look after yours to avoid all of these problems either now or in the future. You ready? Let's go. So here we have it, the maiden hair fern, an absolute stunner of a plant in my opinion. So we've got this really beautiful, delicate leaves, the sort of bright green new growth as it comes out like this with these tiny little hair-like branches, which is where it gets its name. And it's a really dark brown. I don't know, they're so thin, I don't even know if you can get them on the camera, but absolutely beautiful plant to keep in your home. But there are some issues with this plant. Apart from it looking absolutely beautiful, they are known for, for being a bit picky. Like I said in the intro, I disagree with that a little bit. They will drop fronds, the leaves will go brown, but in general, there are a few key points. Now, firstly, being a fern, people think, oh, it's gonna be a low light plant. Now, it will tolerate a bit of lower light, but the plant is going to suffer as a result of that. It will slow down its growth you won't get as much vibrant green on the plant and uh, it may even get a bit of yellowing on the leaves where it's searching for light. It will prefer a brighter position. Now, not in direct sunlight, obviously it's gonna scorch the leaves, but a bright position is where it would like to be indirect, but bright. It will tolerate a little bit of direct light, maybe afternoon sun if the sun comes round and touches the leaves. It's not gonna be a massive issue as long as it doesn't get scorched. And the same with early morning sunlight. If it's just a little bit, it's going to be fine. You can see places in nature, in its native environment, the sun's gonna hit it occasionally, you know, that's gonna be fine. If it's dappled shade and the sun is coming through and hitting some of the leaves, that's not gonna be a problem. What is a problem is the moisture level within the soil. You have to get the water in right, and this is something that a lot of people struggle with because let's face it if you've watched any of my other videos a lot of what i say when it comes to watering the general advice is let the plant start to dry out a little bit and just as it starts to dry out maybe the top inch of soil maybe inch and a half once that starts to get dry maybe water again now this plant is different you must maintain the moisture level so the soil must stay moist as soon as it starts to dry out is gonna start dropping fronds, the leaves are gonna to start to get crispy and brown, and that's when it doesn't look its best. So you've gotta keep that moisture level up. But here's the issue, it can't be sopping wet and soaking all the time either. So you've gotta get it in the middle, and that, I'm afraid, requires regular attention. It just means you have to be mindful of this plant and check it on a regular basis. Because if you don't check it for three days and the weather warms up, and maybe the sun comes around and dries out this plant, then you're gonna have issues because as soon as that starts drying, you're gonna have problems and it will die quite easily once it starts drying out. So that's where it gets its reputation for, for being picky, but I wouldn't say it's picky, it just requires more water. Compared to something like a Calathea or Bifolia, for example, which even if you give it the right moisture, the right humidity and the right feeding, it's still potentially gonna get brown leaf tips and still gonna be a bit picky. Well, this one, 
I think will will reward you with really good looking uh, foliage and, and new plant growth if you just get that moisture level right, it's key. A lot of people also say high humidity, which it will appreciate the higher humid levels. But really, if you think about it, that really just dictates how long it takes for it to dry out. So the higher humidity, the longer it's gonna to take to use the moisture, the transpiration will be slower, which means um, the moisture will stay in the soil for longer, which will benefit this plant. But you know, the moisture in my house isn't particularly high. I have central heating because I'm here in the UK. So in the winter, the heating's on, which does dry out the atmosphere some, uh, some more. But as long as you keep the moisture level in the soil okay, then yes, it will dry out a bit quicker. It just means I'm going to have to water more often. That's all. That's much more important than the overall humidity around the plant, which will vary a lot anyway. And it will it will tolerate the drier levels. It will not to tolerate any dryness in the soil. So here's my tips, okay? If you have your plant in an, uh, an outer plot like this, this is ideal, but you must keep it in a, in a plastic pot within it. So you can see there's plastic pot in there and now it's in this outer pot. It not only looks good, but what that allows you to do is give it a really good soak in here and that will drain through and then the water will sit in the bottom of this plant pot and the water that has drained through will sit in here. And what you can do is leave it in there because over the next half an hour, an hour, uh, if it needs more water than that, because it can only take on so much water when you're putting it in the top of the plant. And a lot of people like to water from the bottom for that reason. But I like to water from the top and get the full uh, top area saturated first but then as it goes through it will sit in the bottom and the water will be sitting maybe an inch or so above the holes and that means that over time if the soil and the plant needs more water it will bring it back up through the bottom of those holes and it will take it up again into the, the bottom half of the pot so that is good what is not good is if you water loads and loads and loads and then you just let it sit there indefinitely, that is gonna be an issue. What you really want is to water it, let it sit for an hour or so, two hours if you've got something going on, but don't forget it, come back, take this inner pot out, pour the residue out down your sink, put it back in the pot, it's gonna be okay. But what you must do is just put your finger in the soil from time to time as in reasonably regularly because a plant can feel perfectly moist one day and then the next day is starting to dry out and especially with this one it will not tolerate it so you've got to be really on the ball with that so firstly water well give it as much as you possibly can let it sit in water but after an hour or so drain it out it can't sit in water all the time because over time the soil will be absolutely waterlogged and the roots can't sit in that much water. They will rot and you'll lose the plant. But it does prefer more rather than less. You can't let it dry out at all, okay? Secondly, let's move on to losing fronds because these plants do drop fronds. They, that's what happens, it's natural. As you get new leaves coming, new fronds coming out, the lower ones, the older ones that have been there the longest will die off shrivel up and drop. That is normal. So if you have a plant like this and there's some brown ones towards the bottom of the plant, just pull them off, cut them off. If they're totally dry, they'll come off very easily. They'll fall off themselves. Or you can just snip them off with some scissors to keep it looking nice. Don't worry about it. It's just the natural process of creating new, uh, new fronds and losing the old ones. So I wouldn't worry about that. The same with uh, browning ones around the butt around the base if they're all around the base it probably just means they're the older ones and they're shriveling up and they're drying out so once in a while when you see them just cut them off and you're absolutely fine so don't worry if you are losing fronds it's normal for this plant and that's absolutely fine what but <laughs> and there is a but if you're losing more fronds than you're getting in new ones then obviously it's not happy about something and you need to figure out what that is. If they are, if they are, are all 
crinkling up and going dry and the whole thing is looking dry and it's losing a lot of fronds it's probably the moisture level you probably let it dry out a bit in which case if you're lucky you can reinstate the water and you'll be okay but there's a good chance it won't like it and it will and it will die so just to be aware um, secondly if it's yellowing and uh, it's looking a bit limp and and the leaves are coming down then it might not have enough light it might be looking for light or not enough uh, feed so obviously you need to feed your plant maybe once every couple of weeks uh, something like that maybe once a week in the peak growing season but it doesn't need huge amounts extra it, the water the water is much more important with this particular plant and that really is it uh, from what it comes down to don't worry about the fronds falling off too much as long as it's still a good looking plant as long as it still has a massive canopy of amazing looking branches like this one if it's looking healthy and there's a vibrant green color and the branches are standing up proud then there's probably nothing wrong with it if it's yellowing have a look at the light levels uh, like the light in here today is bright there's no light shining on it but it's a very bright position it's going to be fine in here and um, and if it's drying out then you know you've got it coming unfortunately you have to be on the ball if you're the type of person that regularly forgets to water your plants this one is probably not for you because you can't forget about it just if you have it keep it in a place where you're there you know often if you're walking past just always put your finger in the pot and check it out if the top of the pot feels wet then that's what that's where it's supposed to be if there's any sort of sign it's drying out you can usually feel the weight of it get used to picking it up and feeling what it feels like if it starts to get lighter or this or the very top of it not not an inch down but the very surface starts to dry out water it again that is my key to this is water humidity not a big deal if you've got a humidifier great that will slow the transpiration and slow the requirement for for water so you can water less often but essentially you've got to get that water uh, at the right time to keep it looking good but apart from that i don't think it's particularly picky it just needs that higher level of water so give it a go enjoy a plant like this i think i could just stare at a plant like this for hours because the leaves each one is individual and they're just such pretty looking plants they can grow quite big as well if you keep them alive long enough then you can pot them on and pot them on and you can really get a big canopy of um, a foliage that looks absolutely stunning in your living living space so give it a go for yourself let me know how you get on if you have any care tips of your own uh, of the maiden hair fern i'd love to hear from you down in the comments below please give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful or useful and subscribe for more house plant related videos coming along very soon bye for now